The Cisalpine Republic was a short-lived political entity that emerged in northern Italy during the tumultuous times of the French Revolution. After decisive victories against Austria in the Upper Italian Campaign, Napoleon proclaimed the Cisalpine Republic on the 29th of June, 1797. It was one of France's sister republics at the time. In this new era of revolution in Europe, the French government had a sense of mission and a need to break free from its isolation from the rest of monarchical Europe. As a result, France supported self-proclaimed republics and sought to spread its revolution. Napoleon played an active role in establishing these sister republics. He hoped for financially stable and politically dependable governments that would recognize French hegemony and adopt French legislation. The Cisalpine Constitution, proclaimed by Napoleon, therefore closely resembled the French Constitution of 1795. The Parliament consisted of two chambers, the Great Council and the Council of the Seniors. The executive branch of government was formed by a five-member directory. However, due to the ongoing threat from Austria in northern Italy, ultimate authority remained with the commander of the French troops in the region. The Cisalpine Republic, with Milan as its capital, included territories previously held by Austria, such as Lombardy, Veneto, and parts of Emilia-Romagna. It had a population of approximately 3.5 million people. Austria recognized the new republic in the Treaty of Campo Formio on the 17th of October, 1797. In return, Austria gained what was left of the Venetian Republic. This treaty marked the end of the War of the First Coalition, giving the Cisalpine Republic room to develop. To ensure a smooth transition from provisional to stable rule, and from obvious French control to a regime that was at least in principle independent, Bonaparte himself, under orders from Paris, appointed the initial members of the Cisalpine Directory and the two chambers. The individuals chosen for these positions included both moderates and democrats from various regions within the new state. The Cisalpine period, both before and after the Constitution's promulgation, witnessed rapid development of public opinion and political awareness, unlike anything Italy had experienced since the invention of printing. In early 1798, the French and Cisalpine governments negotiated a treaty. France recognized the Cisalpine's independence while offering protection, but the French maintained control over the police and stationed an army of 25,000 men in the sister republic. The Cisalpines were also required to raise an additional army of 35,000 men to participate in French campaigns. Additional secret articles forbade trade with England. The treaty, although viewed unfavorably by most historians as a reflection of the cynicism of the French directory, doesn't appear to have been entirely unreasonable. The very existence of the Cisalpine Republic depended on the further abasement of Austria, which in turn depended on the defeat of Britain. Despite the Treaty of Campo Formio, it was evident that Austria had ambitions beyond annexing Venetia and aimed to acquire more territories at the expense of the Cisalpine or the Papal States. Their ultimate goal was to eliminate the Cisalpine Republic entirely and eradicate the influence of new-style republicanism in Italy. On the 4th of March, 1798, the Cisalpine Directory presented the treaty to the Great Council for ratification. The council, clearly unsatisfied with the terms, delayed the decision for a few days. However, after facing threats from General Louis-Alexandre Berthier, the commander of the French army in the Cisalpine Republic, they ultimately approved the treaty. The reaction from the Council of the Seniors was quite different. While expressing deep gratitude to France, they rejected the treaty due to the overwhelming financial burden it imposed on the new state. A constitutional stalemate was imminent. This stance angered both the army and the Parisian directory. Members of the Council of the Seniors were accused of delivering seditious speeches, and General Berthier threatened to establish military rule in the region. In light of Berthier's unsuccessful handling of the situation, General Guillaume Brun replaced him. This led to a proposal for a coup d'etat. Brun personified the archetype of a democratic or staunchly Republican general. Having been a law student and typesetter in his youth, he joined one of the volunteer battalions in 1791 and was a prime example of someone whose career had flourished due to the opportunities provided by the revolution. Upon his transfer to Italy in March 1798, he had just been involved in the revolution in Switzerland, where the Helvetic Republic had been established. Brun believed in international democratization and actively participated in the purge in the Cisalpine Republic. In Milan, Brun associated with the most fervent revolutionaries who advocated for the unification of Italy and endorsed strong language and measures against the church. Although he successfully persuaded the Cisalpine Republic to ratify the treaty with France, he didn't always align with the French government. The French internal power struggles regarding republicanism and executive authority also manifested on the soil of the sister republics. Consequently, the French directory dispatched Ambassador Trouvet, a moderate civilian, as the minister to Milan to serve as a check on Brune. Trouvet was instructed to collaborate with Italian moderates in order to amend the constitution and alleviate the agitation caused by democrats, unitarists, and anti-clericals. Brun declined the military support necessary for such an action and went to Paris to advocate for the Italian Democrats. Nonetheless, 
Truve managed to successfully introduce a new constitution, discarding the one promulgated by Napoleon a year earlier. The new constitution restricted voting rights to adult males who paid direct taxes and enhanced the executive authority in relation to the legislative power. Truve was later replaced by Fouché, a figure with ambiguous views, who was more widely recognized as an extremist of the terror than as the police official he would become. Fouché aligned himself with Brun, and together they continued to support the Cisalpine Democrats. They reinstated many of them into the government. In a subsequent coup d'etat, the fourth in line, a new group of French agents dispatched to Milan expelled Brun's Italian supporters. The rapid succession of coup d'etats in the Cisalpine Republic highlighted certain key political aspects. The Republic was not truly independent, nor could the French allow it to be as long as the war persisted, with the peace of Campo Formio serving as nothing more than a temporary break before hostilities resumed. Unsurprisingly, the Cisalpines harbored resentment toward French domination. In fact, anti-French sentiment grew among Italian revolutionaries. However, it is challenging to envision how, if left to themselves, they would or could have taken the measures necessary to preserve their independence from Austria. And so it happened that with the start of the Second War of Coalition, combined Russian and Austrian forces were able to defeat the French and Italian troops and occupied Milan. The Cisalpine Republic was quickly dissolved in April 1799. In May 1800, Napoleon led his troops across the Alps via the Great St. Bernard Pass into Italy for yet another military campaign against the Austrians. He narrowly emerged victorious at the Battle of Marengo on the 14th of June, 1800, leading to the restoration of the Cisalpine Republic. Napoleon's subsequent victories offered him an opportunity to stabilize the political situation across northern Italy. Following Austria's surrender and the signing of the Treaty of Lunaville on the 9th of February 1801, the Republic's territory expanded to the east, with the frontier now positioned along the Adige River. Napoleon then decided to assume control of the Cisalpine Republic himself. In January 1802, he invited Cisalpine deputies to a special congress in Lyon. Napoleon delivered a speech in fluent Italian. He announced that he had convened the delegates of the Cisalpine Republic to agree to his assumption of the title of president. Napoleon personally struck out the word Cisalpine from the Constitution and replaced it with Italian, eliciting applause from the crowd. Thus, the Italian Republic was established, marking the end of the Cisalpine Republic's brief existence and its final assimilation into the broader French sphere of influence.